and oh no closed <laughs> captioning all right go dude okay so like these are the two cameras i've been using one is a wise the white one and the black one is a Blink Outdoor. Blink actually has three cameras. They have one like this, one that looks white, that's for indoors. And they have a mini that is a wired camera. The indoor and the outdoor are both wireless cameras. This one's actually, they say that it has weather protection. So you can actually hook it up out in the rain and whatever and I have some outside and hasn't had any problems so far. So basically, uh, this comes as a kit for a starter kit where this is uh, basically a sync module. This is what actually connects to your Wi Fi. And if you see a little thing sticking out, it's a USB drive that you use for local storage. Uh, first thing, when you get a kit, you will get one of these things. You'll get a camera. You get a little thingy that you use to open the screw in the back. You also get a tiny mount that you can use. Uh, for using it on the gourd, I'm not using it because it will take up a little bit of space that I don't want to use. So basically, first thing you do is you plug this up on power and you get on your phone app, you have to download an app called Blink Home. And basically you set up this first. Once you set this up, then you add camera one by one. So once you set up this at the back of the camera, once you open the cover in the back, I don't think you can see on this. Yeah, we can see it. No, there is a bar, there is a code, QR code. You have to scan this code to get this camera registered to your system. So don't get this plugged into the box wherever you want to put it before you scan mm -hmm. this. Thing, or you're going to have to do that again. And you see two slots for batteries. You can do that or you can see a USB port that is a micro USB that you can plug in a solar panel or a power bank also like a, there are a bunch of power banks they sell like for around 15 20 dollars that has quite a bit of power that will run this for a while so basically once you plug this in like once you add this on your app it comes up as some heebie-jeebie numbers and letters on your app once that's set up you can name it whatever you want to name it I usually name it by location. And every time I change location, I change the name. And then basically you have to do all the settings on your app. And uh, so let's go one by one. First thing uh, I do for this is wherever I'm gonna mount it. Uh, so if you look at the back, there is a screw. This is a 1 14th size screw. And at the pitch is, I think, 20. So if you use a screw of any type that matches the thread, you can just plug this in directly. But because I'm using this inside a board, <coughs> that is not a problem. If you use it outside, you have to use the back cover. And for a back cover, basically, you just plug the back cover in. And Hold it a little higher. Sorry, yeah. There we go. Yeah, the back cover and this mount, it goes, it just clips on. So you can do that. Uh, but the problem is like, this is about one and a half inches. So this camera will be sticking inside in the gourd for all the Bluebird houses. I actually use it with the mount and I'll show you guys what I have done on the Bluebird boxes also. So this thing that comes with the camera to open the thing, it can also be used as mounting because this thing can actually clip on like this. And this thing clips on this. So 
So you can mount this like a 90 degree thing, okay. but you don't have to. It's an option in case you need it. Like let's say you're mounting it from a roof and you want it to come completely straight up, then you can do that, but you don't need to for the thing. So for a super gourd, what I have done is just see the cap, you see a black thing in the center, it just straight on screws on these and it basically stays on like that and you just put it on and you can see on a, this is a super gourd. So only problem with that super gourd I can think of is if you pre-fill it with nesting material, I think you will have the nest high enough that you will be able to see with the camera. The alternative is you can see another black dot in the front where if you mount the camera, it will actually hang like this from inside. So it will hang like this. Uh, it can be mounted like this, so it will stay inside and uh, it will actually catch. Uh, it's gonna be hard to see from all this, but I can post photos later. So this can be mounted like this, but remember if you do this, better cock it around oh, yeah. or it's gonna <laughs> leak water inside. Mm -hmm. So that's one option, but my preference is using it from the entry cap. Now, a lot of you have venting caps, like uh, venting elbows there. So you might wanna have a spare cap just to mount the camera. And then the reason I did this so that I can just have two, three cameras and I can switch the cap around and mm -hmm. I can cover multiple gourds whenever I wanna switch the camera to a different gourd. Like if you, drill a hole here, this is permanent. Mm -hmm. So you always have to skip something here or you're gonna have water going in there. Uh, this will only apply to super gourds for mounting it from the front wall, but you cannot do this on a horizontal gourd. It might work on excluder gourd too. Yeah, so because this does not have enough height here that if you try to put in a camera like this, that birds while getting in will be constantly knocking onto the camera. So I would not recommend putting it on the top wall. I would just put it from the, uh, from the cap. And uh, I'm sure everyone has some spare caps at home just in for case of emergencies. So I think this comes in handy. Uh, so for mounting in other places, like I say, if you're just looking at your rig and you want to have a camera, just you can put it in a tree or wherever. It doesn't have to be anywhere fancy. As long as you have about one and a half inches, just two screws, you can just stick this in and the camera just snaps on and you're all done. Uh, so for a bluebird house, this is a, a PVC house, uh, has a round cap. You can even have a square cap, but it's just in the center. It has enough height here, about two inches, that gives you enough room for mounting a camera. Uh, you get the concept, like this is the Kathy's, uh, box, same thing. If you look inside, you can just mount a camera on the top and be <clears> done <throat> with it. Uh, I think we have spoken enough about mounting. Uh, so this camera, if you buy as a kit, uh, I think it's about $90. Uh, it gives you a month of free trial on the cloud. But once the 30 days is over, uh, this provide two services. One is you pay $3 per camera per month, or you pay $10 per month for cloud space. But uh, I am using it on free service. So I have a USB on my device. 
So everything records there. So when you open your phone and go to the app, it shows on the first tab, it just shows all your camera. On the second tab, it basically shows all your recordings. So I, I would like not this. personally recommend someone to pay. Yeah, so this is the first tab. And if you go to the next tab, you basically have all the, uh, basically have all the recordings and then third tab is your setting. So like I said, you install the sync module, then you install the cameras and you name it. And then uh, do you want me to go over the settings a little bit? Can I ask a few questions because I'm yeah, old absolutely. and I'll, I'll forget before we get to that. <laughs> sure. Okay. I'm assuming that the camera orients itself horizontally and vertically, yes. regardless of which way you have it turned. Yeah. Okay. Does it? I didn't know that. Yeah. So if you have it on hand, uh, let me remove the sticker. Just for orientation, like even if you're working at dark, there is a little dot on the right side of the camera. So, and you will see uh, little holes in the bottom that is for the microphone. And I think the microphone is here, the speakers are here. Because mm -hmm. this is it, it will work as a two way thing also. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, I ran out of hosts. I wanted to see if a house sparrow got into one of my nests and I could scare it off, but unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have one. So oh, um, don't don't say that because <laughs> now the, this is the infrared sensor. So if you use this dot for orientation, so you know when it's on the right, yeah. you are basically looking at horizontal yes. orientation. If you just if you're using a mount. You just rotate. Same goes for the screw. Mm -hmm. Like it gives you 360 degree flexibility. You can just tighten the screw and just rotate a little bit because once you put it on a cap, you want to have one marking somewhere where you orient that dot with. So mm -hmm. when you okay. screw it on, you remember how your camera <clears throat> is looking at. And the other thing also I would recommend after you put it on, look it to your phone and see what kind of video you're looking at before you raise your rig up. So you don't have to lower it again and fix the video. So can I just add, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, I'm sorry. Can I just add, I have, I, my, the one I have in the board right now are, are like the original blinks. And like when you first said safe about the screw hole in the back, the originals mm -hmm. don't have that. So I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Now I see it because I got the new ones today, but the yeah. old ones didn't have that. I just have my command stripped in there. I cut out a piece of um, that foam board mm -hmm. and, and smashed it in there as like a flat back because the mm -hmm. back is bubbled. Yeah. And then I just put three of the big command strips on there and it's been holding great. I was going to yeah. take it down, but I can't pull the <laughs> rack down because I have so many fledgers right now, but it's holding yeah. great. And it's just command strips. Yeah, that will work. And also like, if you want an alternative to mounting this, what I will say is any kind of like those like chicken fans or anything like that, you can just wrap it around as long as there is not a wire running in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. Like this is like less than half an inch by half an inch. All you need is that half an inch of clearance. And this will sit on a cage and you can just cut four prongs out of a wire fans and just run them through the cap and you can just bend the wires on the back and it will hold it onto the cap also. Like that will be an alternative to mounting anywhere, like any box, you can just, if you have a wire fence or anything like that, that can be bent to make a tiny box. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I had one, but I forgot. <laughs> I interrupted you. <laughs> okay. So, no, like you I said, the price is ninety dollars for the kit, but it's a little less. But well, they're forty percent off right now. Yeah. So I think that's the the deal runs off today, and uh, they were. I got two cameras, and the I didn't even need the new sync module because I can yeah. put ten on the one I have. Yeah. But it was only $10 more if I bought the kit. So I just went ahead and bought yeah. the kit. 
So they know, like if you buy it separately, it's 32 or $33 or something like that. But it was $114 for two for cameras and the sink. Yeah. So, and when you try to add a camera, I think it's like $10 less, but I think during this deal, it was like $50 per camera. So mm -hmm. I didn't really buy my initial setup from, uh, Amazon. I actually bought from eBay. I found a deal where it was like never, never opened from a reliable seller. But if you're going to eBay shopping, you need to understand how things work there and make sure all those sellers that they take uh, PayPal or something reliable where you can get your money back. Otherwise, I would not recommend buying anything from eBay. Uh, so basically, once you set up the camera. There are some settings on the camera that I would want you to understand. Uh, few of them, I... like once you plug it in, like basically the first thing it says is the name. You can just name it to wherever you located it or whatever. Then on the setting, it actually shows you the temperature wherever the camera is right now, mm -hmm. which actually comes in handy. Then uh, you have motion detection. Basically motion detection is for, if you want the sensor to pick up when it records or you want to manually record. If your motion detection is enabled, uh, let me see if I can share my screen and show you the, oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Are you trying to, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. I, so this is the first I've had paid any attention to all of this. What is, is there? What's the distance maximum between the camera and the sink? Okay, so they officially they say that it's hundred foot, but uh, I have some folks that have managed to get okay signal up to hundred and fifty feet. But after hundred and fifty yeah. feet, I think like it will be on and off kind of like it won't be persistent. Well, and mine are only 50 feet and it's not great. I mean, I get it, but it's not, and it, it won't work. The motion detector won't work because it's so slow. It's so, when I, when I'm watching them, I can, I know it's delayed because I can hear the bird and then I hear it on the thing. So yeah. also, how I'm uh, installing an outdoor uh, Wi-Fi extender. I'm going to try that. Yeah. So also, even I when I didn't you hear that, what was that? I'm sorry. Installing an outdoor Wi-Fi extender. It was like yeah. a 50 bucks for a good one. Yeah. Um, so for this, even if you are watching live, the video will not actually be coming live. It's actually two seconds delayed. So like if you're around box and you can hear the bar chirping, the video will be chirping like few seconds later. Mm -hmm. So it's not really 100% live. Yeah. Uh, and then, like I was saying, on the setting, so I recommend keeping the motion detection on, and then right next to motion detection, you will see zones. Zones basically shows you a grid of the picture that is right now seeing. What I do for my boxes, I usually, once you have eggs, or once the mom is uh, sitting there on the eggs, I usually deactivate that area so, because otherwise the mom will sit there and constantly move and preen its feathers and all that stuff. And you will be getting constant uh, notification that there is action going on inside the box. Uh, so if you deactivate that area, what it does is every time the bird gets in and out, the camera gets activated and you see, like, let's say mom is sitting there and dad comes in, brings her some treat, and then you will see that. If you want everything recording, you basically don't deactivate any zone. It will pick up everything. Then the next thing is like a re-trigger time. It's like, let's say the camera activated right now. If you increase the time, it will wait a minute and then it will start back again, picking up motion. If you have re-trigger time longer, it will wait that long in between activity. So you can choose to like, if you're getting a lot of videos, you want to reduce, like you want to increase the re-trigger time so you don't get constant videos, constant notifications. 
the sensitivity basically if you increase the sensitivity if like it goes from 2 to 9 at 9 if you have any dust flying inside the box it will pick up so it can get sometimes very annoying when you get all these clips that really does not mean anything uh, the clip length is basically how long you want this every time it gets activated how long you want this camera to go on before it stops recording i have mine set up between 15 and 30 seconds because usually let's say mom brings a bug it usually they're done by 30 seconds feeding the bug and then they go back to normal if you have a longer duration batteries will run out faster uh, and then there is an option where it says end clip early if motion stops Somehow, I don't think that's working right because if you have it activated, every clip ends like around five to 10 seconds and you would never get a 30 second clip if you, if you select 30 seconds. So I have it turned off. Also, I turned off early notification because then it will be focusing on sending you a notification instead of sending you, uh, like it will start recording. Early notification would work good if you are like, using it as security camera or like let's say you put it out and you want to see if hawks or owls are coming and you want it notify you as soon as something happens then that will be a good option to pick uh, let's see then uh, on this you have night vision i keep it at auto so that when it gets dark or like, let's say mom or dad is getting in and the mm. book inside gets dark, it activates. Uh, and the intensity, I always keep at medium. They say, if you put it in high, it will basically run the battery. Uh, enable microphone actually activates microphone and the speaker. If you turn the microphone off, it won't record any sound period. A uh, video of the quality, they have saver, standard, and best. Mine is at least at this point set up at best because I want to get best quality pictures. Uh, there is a photo capture option on the menu that I have turned off because it just keeps taking random photos every certain interval that is useless. Uh, and then there is a status. Under status, you will see a status LED that I turn off. Otherwise, this thing will keep turning red every few minutes. Whenever the camera activates, it will turn red and it just, it probably irritates the mom. Like I see, I had it turned on. Every time it turned on, mom would look at the camera and peck at the camera. Mm -hmm. I have it turned off. I think they see gnats in the light too though. Yeah, also like this thing is very shiny. So, mm -hmm. uh, they see their own reflection and uh, interestingly the dad looks at himself more than the mom i think it's because <laughs> of the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably they they think that there is a rival inside the gourd with him i don't think he, the dad's got like sleeping beauty syndrome or whatever uh snowy white syndrome do uh, you think it would be do you think it would be wise to put some opaque tape over the I think that. so. I think so. I think like I was just lazy, but I think uh, next season I might just use like a masking tape, the painter's masking tape and just tape it up with something, some dark color. So in the dark, it won't because like it activates automatic uh, or you can just spare the area where the IR sensor is, the infrared sensor is. Just leave that area open and cover it up rest. Like, I guess once I do it, I can confirm. <laughs> uh, so there is, like I said, the activity zone you can select and you can decide how much area you want to trigger for recording and like that. And then uh, I think I also touched base on the paid service versus the unpaid service. Basically, only thing that it does not do when you have the cloud service, every time you go live mode, it starts recording when you have cloud. When you don't have cloud, it only records based on the sensor. Like whenever the motion sensor picks up something, it records, otherwise it does not. But I have a 256 gigabyte thumb drive stuck on the thumb 
like sync module and I haven't had any problem so far. Like it will start overwriting once you are full. So you still will have your recent videos on it. So like, unless someone like, I can access all these videos from anywhere without the live service. So I do not really see any justification of paying for the cloud services. So you can, you can access the videos from the sync module without pulling the USB and putting it in the computer? Yeah. Okay. It, I just go on my phone and uh, normally when it used to so show the cloud videos, now it just shows and you click on the video, it says, oh, we're grabbing the video from the USB. It's going to take a moment. It just takes exact same time when it used to catch from cloud. So it's just uh, I think a sales pitch trying to That doesn't annoy you at all, does it say? <laughs> does not bother. Like, as long as it opens, I can watch the video. Like that's a, like for, I have eight cameras right now. That's hundred dollars a year extra <laughs> that I don't see like bars won't stick around here more than three months. So I would rather spend that money on something that will be helpful. That's the nice thing about having the old ones is I'm grandfathered in. My cloud is free. Oh, awesome. Mm. So that works out for you because I just opened up recently. So it won't work out for me. <laughs> Way you to make everybody feel bad. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, uh, not sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Say if no. that, was, that was thorough and fantastic. And I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're recording this and that it will be on YouTube because so questions regarding... they're really easy they're really easy yeah once you do one you will know mm. like there is really nothing to it uh, right. questions regarding this or any questions regarding yeah I think I I started to say let's wait till the end to do questions but I think we need to do them now because yours is yours will be specific to what you're doing and then Dustin's will be yeah. specific to what he's doing. So does anybody have a question? It might be kind of a dumb question because I don't have much experience with these cameras at all, but does it auto focus or do you have to manually? So it focus auto focuses. It auto focuses. No, it, it auto focuses. Okay. Like if you see a bard, like let's say for my blue bards, because the hole is close to the camera. So when you, when the bard, flies in, you will see a blur, and then it takes a moment to focus, and then you will see the bar in focus. Mm -hmm. But if usually because you're constantly seeing the bottom of the box, so it's always automatically focuses at the bottom. But when a bar comes in, it tries to focus, but usually you will see like a motion blur, and then you'll see the bar. Okay, thank you. They really are super easy. They're They're literally like, plug and go it only takes it i added the two new cameras to my existing sink it literally took me five minutes they're really really simple it takes longer to hang them up than it does to get them set up yeah and like as long as you have wi-fi uh, what i would recommend if you have not bought this piece yet i would recommend take your phone turn your cell phone connection off like your cell network off just keep it on a Wi-Fi and go out there where you have your rig and see if you get a Wi-Fi signal. That's a good that idea. That way you would know that you're getting at least some Wi-Fi. That was one of my questions. So um, I did that with my phone. I went out and turned off the, I don't know what the technical term is, but and was just using Wi-Fi. And I, I think it was like kind of halfway. What um, is that good enough or? Yeah, it should be because I think uh, like if I go to my backyard and I take my laptop, let's say I can go up to 50 feet. After that, my Wi-Fi kind of starts to disrupt. But uh, my farthest camera is more than 100 foot away. And uh, it, I think, mainly talks to the sync module and then use the Wi-Fi as backup. I'm not 100% sure. And uh, I have no way of verifying it, but because my phone, my, my camera to the farthest point never had any problem connecting or just like sending videos, but I don't get a very good signal at that corner, like on my Wi-Fi. It would be like of the five bars, I get two bars, mostly one bar, but the camera works fine. 
So if I wanted it for um, outside the box to see if I'm having an owl problem or see what's happening, mm -hmm. what uh, is that going to work for me? Or is it, it, is it going, is it, if I could go like what, like um, 20 feet away, if I could put the camera 20 feet away, am I gonna see yeah. enough or? Oh. You can do is if you have multiple poles you put one on one pole and focus on the other and do the vice versa like let's say you have two poles you just put two cameras that looks from two different directions and covers the whole area this way you don't have to put a separate pole and uh, worry about mounting you can just screw in a little piece of wood like let's say if you have a gemini they have multiple holes on the thing on the ring so you can just stick a piece of wood from the rack and just plug it on the wood and you're done. You can even zip tie it on the, <laughs> use two zip ties and just zip tie it from the sides onto the rack, wherever you want to mount it. Could you put it on the, could you mount it to a board and put it on the ground looking straight up? Yeah, like mine, when it was looking at the rig, I have a, grapevine stand in the back. Uh, I just screwed the mount on the grapevine uh, thing and just it was just working just fine. Do you know um, what the, do you know what the distance is that will pick up motion and record a so bird sized object? Up to like if you use sensitivity five, uh, it picks up clearly up to 50 feet. After 50 feet, it starts to like hit or miss. But if you go up on the sensitivity, it will pick up farther. But the problem with go higher sensitivity is, let's say when it rains, <laughs> it mm. activates even with the water drop falling, the rain Or drop, a gnat goes by. But if you are not bothered by it, then it works fine. Cause like how many times would it rain? Like maybe for a few days? <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Cool. That Say was if, great, easy to yes. understand. I have one more. And okay. you may have kind of covered this earlier and then went, I don't know. So say you're trying to adapt this to a natural gourd, which uh -huh. they're thick, they may be a little darker. Uh -huh. Then a uh, super gourd or an excluder gourd, is it just going to go into night mode and stay like that all the time because it's so dark in there? And how do you think that would work? It, it will likely, unless like you have any way of getting more light in it. Mm -hmm. uh, it will like as soon as even with this, uh, with a super gourd or a natural or like a prior horizontal, every time mom or dad comes mm -hmm. in, if it if they're like messing around on the or like let's say mom sometimes just sits on the porch and halfway sits sticking out it goes on to infrared mode it does not show color because it blocks the light from the entrance hole it blocks the light yes i see okay even like right now i just checked mine and the babies are sitting in the entrance hole so it's dark inside mm -hmm. yeah okay Well, if nobody has any more questions for Saif, uh, that was that was great. Thank you very Sorry, much. Sorry, I had a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, are there multiple models of this camera, and which one would you? What are we talking about? Okay, so for uh, Blink, they first came up with Blink XT, then they had XT2. You will be able to find all those on eBay. And then from XT2, now they're coming up with three different models that are sold new. Uh, this is the outdoor. You will see something like this with a white shell that is the indoor, which basically like I think $10 cheaper, but that's not, they're claiming that it's not weather protected. But if you use it inside, I think it might just work fine. I just haven't bought one to test it out. And then they also have a mini that is wired like let's say you want to watch things from your window or like you have a like power source, you can use the mini, which is like at regular price, I think it's 39, but 
I think they're selling it for $19 during the sale. Uh, yeah, they all work fine is uh, like this one just weather protected. So everyone went for the, like no one really tested the others to confirm that they will be all right. Like I should have actually bought the indoor one and tested it out. I don't know why I haven't done that. How often sure. do they go on sale? They're so always I, on sale on Black Friday and Prime Day for sure. Yeah. Okay. I can't make that best of a decision <laughs> tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, Prime Day is not actually until the 22nd. So I don't know if they're going to do it again, but they, I think it does. I think the sale ends tonight, but they'll do it again on Black Friday. And the season yeah. is almost over anyway. So you might as well just, they, they, they do go on sale a couple times a year. And I will add that there are um, other mounting they even have like a mounting thing that's like that rubber thing that would wrap around a pole or, you know, yeah. the leg of a pergola or something like a, what's that called that, you know, like a no. rubber covered wire or whatever. Yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. They, yeah. They have um, ones that'll hook into a gutter. Um, they have ones that will hook underneath of a shingle of a house. They have all kinds of mounts. So you're not stuck yeah, with just the They have a bracket that that you can put on a flat wall and the camera just goes flat on the wall. Yep. So you guys pay $3 a month? Is that what you're saying? No, I don't I'm pay not paying anything. anything. Oh, okay. If you he use the, USB, the you do not need to pay anything because no, you, don't. you can just watch the videos from your phone. And if you need to handle multiple videos, you just unplug the USB and put it on a computer and it works. But she has a special deal. She bought it early, so she has this unlimited. <laughs> right. Yeah, we space. heard we heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was surprised. I guess that's the biggest surprise. I was expecting to have for there to be a mandatory monthly fee. So that's good. The same thing. Thanks for bringing that up. So neither one of y'all pay a monthly fee. No, and no. even if I didn't have the deal that I have, I would do what Safe does. I would just use a thumb drive because the new sync module, which I got with a kit because it was only $10 more, I just went ahead and got it in case my sync module ever dies or whatever. And you just stick a thumb drive in it. And like you said, you just watch it from your app on your phone. So you can watch your videos from anywhere in the world as long as you have Wi Fi. Yep. I check on my dogs all the time when we're not here. <laughs> Okay. Cool. All right. Last call. All right, Dustin. Carry, All right. Oh, carry away. All right. So um basically, um, like I said, like I was saying earlier, and I don't know how much of it y'all heard, I have a home security system um where I have cameras outside, uh, I have cameras uh looking over my dog yard. So for me, it was simpler to try to go around where I tied everything in together because my home security system was already online and uh, I could already see it with my phone. Now, uh, in much the same way, once you buy the system, there's no monthly fees. Um, I actually have a video recorder that uh, sits in my house that records video. Uh, all of my cameras record 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, with an eight terabyte drive, uh, I can hold almost three and a half, four weeks of video, depending on which cameras are, are seeing what. But um, the cameras that I use for the gourds, we take the, uh, the regular gourd cap, like say you've had, and I cut a hole in it, and I wind up with this guy right here. I just cut the, the complete back out of it. And... <clears throat> Then I take a piece of PVC and glue it to it. And then the camera mounts to the outside of the PVC. And you wind up with something really about half this size. I actually cut this PVC adapter in half right here. Um, and that puts the camera on the outside of the gourd. Uh, <clears throat> we were concerned initially with whether or not that was adding any extra heat to the gourd. Um, Electronics do get warm, um, but using a, um, a little thermometer, we found that the gourds with the cameras in them ran one to two degrees warmer than the gourds without. Um, whether that was the camera or 
the elbow vents uh, because of the way that's installed. Um, we put these in after the birds were already in the, in the gourds. So next year, I'm either going to put the elbow vents in the back of the gourd and just permanently put them in the gourd or uh, going to try to find a little bit smaller camera so I can utilize a vent in the cap along with the camera. Um, this has been a, a learning process for me this year, uh, trying to navigate different cameras and trying different weights. Um, these cameras, much like the, uh, the blink and ring cameras, uh, they do have onboard storage where you don't have to have a sync unit. Uh, these cameras can be used individually um, without using a home recording. Uh, they have slots on them for SD cards and you can stick an SD card in the camera and the camera will record individually on its own. Um, you put whatever size SD card you want into it, uh, whether the cameras are on Wi-Fi or plugged in. Me personally, I use the uh, PoE cameras. They're power over ethernet. So I run one wire out to my gourd rack. Um, I have a uh, ethernet switch that is powered with that single wire. Uh, in the gourd rack, and I can plug multiple cameras into that switch. It is an outdoor rated uh, switch, so it's safe to have out there in the rain and everything else. Um, and it's secured to the rack. Everything goes up and down with it. The, the single wire that runs up um, <clears throat> stays right there next to my cable, so my predator guard and everything can go around the wire. So there's nothing outside of the predator guard that any critters can grab a hold to and climb. So it's all secured along with the cable. Um, but like I say, it can be accessed with a phone, um, whether you're doing it with the local onboard storage with the camera or using a, a home security system, it'll go either way. Um, you can set up to where it'll notify you when there's motion, uh, if it sees any type of motion. Uh, for mine, I have the motion activation turned off. Uh, like Saif was saying, you know, the birds are in and out, and especially right now, birds are close to fledging. Uh, the two gourds that we have, uh, the birds should be fledging probably in the next day or so. And in the other gourd, they're about a week from fledging. So those guys are really active. They're all over the place. So if you had the motion detector turned on, it would be going off, you know, nonstop. Um, so with us, we just with the way we have it set up um, on the home security system, we actually have it on the big screen in the living room. So we can sit back on the couch and, you know, watch the birds when we're just relaxing in the evenings and talking, we can put the birds on, put the birds on in the mornings when, you know, getting ready for work and you can just kind of check them out and see what's going on. And um, it's just gave us a very interesting perspective of, you know, what happens with the birds. Um, yeah, you um, see a lot of stuff that you didn't realize. Um, like we were talking about the other day, the moms being uh, yeah. you know, very intentional about who they're feeding. Uh, always assumed it was just kind of a random thing, but it really doesn't look like it. Uh, mom looks like she's, you know, intent on who she's going to feed when she comes in there. She'll yeah. push some of the little guys out of the way to get to a specific bird. Um, but other than that, I can say that the cameras have also, uh, I think there's a little bit of an emotional thing that goes along with it. I know uh, Brandy gets a little nervous sometimes when she sees stuff on the camera. She gave <laughs> and, you the stink uh, eye. I don't think you yeah, saw she that, did. but she gave you the yeah. stink eye. <laughs> I felt it. I, I felt that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes dads get a little overzealous and come in with these big, you know, humongous dragonflies. Yeah. And, it's like it's a little bit too much for Junior to handle, but uh, <laughs> he just shoves it on in there and watches them get it down. But yeah. uh, so there's some little moments that you catch on them that make you a little nervous, but they're pretty neat. But um, I mean, as far as the actual system goes, like I say, it's, it, it works very similar um, in the way that you can access it. It's just the way that the video is stored and the way the cameras are actually hooked up that are a little bit different because like say these are uh, constantly plugged in so there's no batteries to change um, so you don't ever have to worry about the, the batteries getting run down from the night vision being on too long because I have the same thing here 
if mom sits in the uh, entrance of the gourd, um, then it basically with the Connolly entrances, she almost like makes a seal in that entrance. Mm -hmm. So the gourd goes black and then the night vision kicks on. Um, I did do a lot of reading into that to see if the birds could see the infrared light. From everything I've read, they cannot see the infrared light, so it doesn't seem to affect them or bother them. Um, but Brad, you were asking about the uh, putting a light at the bottom looking up at night. Uh, there are a lot of bugs that are attracted to the infrared lights. Um, mm -hmm. I have a, uh, a pan tilt zoom camera on the back of the house that's pointed towards the gourd rack as well. And uh, so we can move it around. It's got a 30 times optical zoom on it. And um, when the night vision on that thing comes on, the bugs come from everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there again, the motion detector is constantly going off on it as well. As far as motion detection, because the bugs are constantly setting it off. So I didn't realize that the bugs could see that infrared light like that, but they are attracted to it. Yeah, I've watched my babies going after the gnats when the infrared light's on. Yeah. I, but, uh, I never thought about it, but we have a security system at our at our shop and it's uh it's exactly what you're talking about. So it, I already know, I already know what, and I, I don't know why I didn't put two and two together, but um, that would be exactly what I would need for here because I just don't think my Wi-Fi is going to reach. Well, I know it's not because one of our early VSTs um, back when we were struggling with how to, how to, how to make them work, uh, I walked around my gourd racks in a trial, uh, and I was my my service was terrible. Um, so I had to remember to turn my Wi-Fi off before the VST, so I didn't get disconnected like I got disconnected on the first VST. So. Is that when we got the close up of your winch? Yes, it is. That is the most recognized. <laughs> Martin Gord Winch in the world. Uh, yes. It would have it would have been if we had gotten a YouTube video of that one. That's the only one we haven't got a YouTube video of. So. I'm kind of glad we didn't get a YouTube. Oh, it was video. so much fun though. Sorry, Brad. It was fun. I don't care. <laughs> well, that, that's the, a, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say for the Wi-Fi extenders, um, you can go with the power line type that plug in and actually anywhere you have uh, power that's on the same circuit. Now you do have to remember with the power line extenders, you know, I know you know that your house has, you know, 220 in it. There's two different legs in the circuit breaker box. So they all have to be plugged in on the same leg. Uh, you know how in your box you have, you know, two runs of 110 coming in. So all of the extenders have to be on that same leg. So sometimes if they don't work, you just have to try a different plug. But um, those work well. And then also uh, Netgear and a couple of the other different companies do what they call the Wi-Fi mesh. And the Wi-Fi mesh works really well also. Uh, I use some of the Orbi mesh routers here uh, to get internet around the house. And um, they all work great. It's my internet connection itself that's terrible out here. We're in the country and it's it's cellular. So uh, we're uh, waiting on the old Starlink to come in so we can get some decent internet. But um, the mesh Wi-Fi does work great. Uh, you can put that in your house and then have a little satellite that you bring out on the porch and plug in and it'll just connect. And it basically functions like a repeater and uh, they just keep tagging on to each other. And, Every time you put one, it gives you a little bit more distance. That's good to know. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Dust for Dustin? I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Let's see. Gord Cam Live. Yeah, that's our. We'll get the angle down right. 
that's our uh, TV in the living room, and that's our two gourds, and then the outside racks with that pan tilt zoom camera off the back of the house. We'll say if you have a fire TV, you can also see the blinks on the fire TV. Okay. But not like that, not three. I think you can only do one at a time. The thing I struggle with is I have a hard enough time getting everything done that I need to get done around the house and on the farm. And if I had one of those, I, I would just be, Me too. I think I would have a hard time. It's addictive. I can, I can tell. Um, yeah, I can see that it's addictive. So I think they're great, a great management tool. Uh, you guys that post your videos, I love it when you post them because it's like we learn something every time we watch a video. You know, I always thought, and I guess a lot of people did, that the nestling that was in the front of the nest always got fed first, but it sure doesn't look like that no. now. And, you know, we have, before we've told people, you know, well, if you've got a runt, make sure you put it in the front of the nest. Well, no. from what we're seeing with the nest cams, it doesn't matter where they're at. They're going to get fed because mama knows they need more food. So yep. That was a really good thing to see. It was a really good, and I will tell you that it, it almost feels to me like she feeds the little one the most. Every yeah. time I'm looking, that's who she, and she pushes through her own babies to go feed that little adoptive baby of hers. So yeah, that was a good feeling. We've learned a lot with, with you posting all those nest cam videos and the other guy, other people posting them too. I'm you know, so safe. grateful to say for it, getting me to go out there and try it because I did try it when we first got them and I couldn't get Wi-Fi out there. So I don't know if my Wi-Fi is just better now or I don't know why, but. Uh, he's got uh, Tiffany Anderson hooked up with some now. She's She will uh, be even more of a crazy bird lady than she already is. She got hers installed today, I think. So <laughs> She's grinning. I say you're grinning. So uh, this has been a very interesting and very informational VST. And uh, I just want to thank uh, Safe and uh, Dustin very much because they were both very prepared uh, and, and very knowledgeable about what they're talking about. And that's, that's what we needed to know because if somebody asked me a question about one, I, I would be, I would be lost. I know nothing about them, so I know I know more about them now than I did, and not maybe not as scared to try it as I once was. But uh, does anybody else have any questions? So, say you use um, you use batteries in yours? Yeah, I'm still using batteries. I do have solar panels, but I'm not using them because what will happen is at night it won't work. Uh, you would have to add a separate power source if you go with a uh, solar panel. Or you can do is you can plug uh, like a power bank in between so the solar panel will charge the power bank and the power bank will always supply power. Mm -hmm. uh, you're just adding more and more stuff to the gourd that I don't want to add. So that's why I did not go with the solar panel at all. Uh, How long do those batteries last? Long time. So they say it's two years, but it it's hasn't lasted years. more than a month. Yeah. Because I'm recording nonstop, mm -hmm. like 200 clips a day. So it lasted me short of a month. Yeah. yeah. On my house, for as my security cameras, they last several months, but not, they've never lasted two years. I, I would say six months to maybe the ones that don't get much motion, maybe a year, but not two years. And the ones I have out in the gourd, the very first day, I thought I ran the, the batteries down, but it wasn't. It's just in the afternoon, my, it might be the heat. I don't know why, but in the afternoon, my Wi-Fi is horrible. And I thought it was the battery running out. But I have the same two batteries in there now. Since those are just regular batteries or what? Oh, lithium. Oh, it has to be lithium batteries. Uh, they're not lithium really cheap. Yeah, these are like, uh, I think for 12, of them, I think it's twenty dollars on Amazon. I think it's even more retail, but yeah, it's kind of pricey. But 
to trade off, you're basically going all wireless. It's on it. so worth it. <laughs> can you can you not use a rechargeable battery? No, uh, you cannot. I have not used it because they keep writing it on their like. Eventually, I'll just give up and probably try some like nickel metal hydride or one of those high capacity rechargeable batteries and see if it works or not. Right. I'd ha I would have to. I would have to try that. <laughs> uh, Christina Thompson, you posted something uh, on the chat about your outdoor. Uh, something you were going to do for a Wi-Fi extender. Would you mind explaining that to us? Well, there's these uh, outdoor grade Wi-Fi extenders, and um, I'm going to take this Wi-Fi extender. I, I already tested it using like um, uh, extension cords, but I can mount that like 100, 150 feet from the house and then extend my Wi-Fi range like pretty deep into my acreage. Wow. So it picks your Wi-Fi up from your house that far away and then extends it even yeah, further. This, yeah, this extender was a, a pretty uh, pricey one. It was like around 350 bucks, uh, but it, it picks up. It's still, you know, um, green light, blue light that far from my house. Okay. Well, that's cool. What, okay, do you know what name it, do you know what name the, the, what name it is, Christina? It's Orbi, O-R-B-I. Okay. And it, it was on Amazon. It's around 350 Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Thanks. I have a question. All right. Go ahead, Debbie. Uh, sorry, I got in on the tail end of this because we had a farm emergency. Did anybody discuss um, a game cameras? No. No. A monitor? game camera okay no. i really liked monitoring mine with a game camera because it was motion activated and i set it uh, on a extension pole up high so it just zoomed in on just the house and i could get the it being new in my first year i could you know uh go in it i, I can't monitor it all the time because i'm working and um so i could just come get the card out of it at night take it in the house and zoom through all the videos or the pictures and, and you know, oh, there's a starling, I gotta take care of that, you know, or something, which I wouldn't have caught if I hadn't had it. And I, I really liked my game camera, but I came down to take it down one day and when I pulled it down, it was open and the hinges were broke. So I don't know if I all hit it or what. And now I can't find the game camera that's suitable to replace it there. Most of them are made for big game. So, um, that's what I would like to try to. I like the Nest cameras too, but I have, I'm like everybody else, have a hot problem with poor internet in the first place. And then even if I had good internet in the house, it reaching outside. So, well, I really I enjoyed can, my I can, I can touch on that some. Uh, Kathy wasn't able to be with us tonight. She's been running Nest cams for, not Nest cams, game cameras for years. And, uh, Tammy, do you remember exactly which model she uses? Um, no, but I can look it up real quickly. Okay. I, I've had a I know she, she uses a Browning camera, and I ended up getting uh, getting two this year, and I'm just running them at night, so I know if I'm having any owl issues. And they, the birds, birds definitely trigger them because if I don't get up there right at the crack of daylight, um, I, I'll have a hundred videos in an hour. But uh, I got the Strike Force Browning Strike Force Apex. I'm almost sure. Um, now at night, I haven't. I have not had a video at night after the Martins settle down and go to roost. They I always have some until. 8.30, 8.45, when they're still flying back and forth between the racks. But I did it primarily just just so I would know if I was having hawk issues. And that's what Kathy uses hers for. She knows she has hawk issues or owl issues. That's why she has her owl cages. And I have not seen any signs that I have had any owl issues, but I wanted to verify that. And I do. So far, I've not had any 
not one visit from an owl. I hate to, I'm going to knock on my porch railing here because I would hate <laughs> to wake up in the morning. But the Browning cameras have a really good, uh, really good reviews. I don't deer hunt anymore, but back when I did deer hunt, they were, they were the, some of the most highly rated cameras and they still are. So they're still making a good product. Okay. Do they have, um, like, do they have like 30 day return or something like that? Do you know? I'm, I'll need to look I, into that. I don't know. If you bought it on Amazon, I think anything you buy on Amazon has got 30 day free return. But, uh, so Kathy got the Browning Strike Force one and Strike Force Pro XD. I think you got the Strike Force Apex. Okay. And I bought a two pack that came with four SD cards and a card reader and they, it came with a bunch of stuff and it just came with eight, eight gig cards, but I check it every day. So an eight, well, actually here's still plugged in from this morning. I, you know, I, I get up and I go turn it off and I get my, get my uh, card out and I, and I hope that when I hope Where's all that? Where's all that noise coming from? I can't uh, uh, where, I hope that I'm I don't sorry, have it was Thomas coming in with all the farm equipment. I'm muted. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, there you go. Um, but you know, I've had as many as 30 or 40 videos, and they it hasn't even been remotely close to filling up the eight gig card. I think uh, I think it'll take 135. I have them set for 15 seconds. I think per clip with a one minute delay between trigger times. Uh, I've had it running. How long, Tammy? A month? Maybe. You remember? Um. Probably a month. You don't have to look it up. Don't worry about it. Probably a month, and I'm. I haven't even made a dent in my batteries yet. So yeah, uh, around May, around May, beginning of May, like May 9th or so is when you got it. Okay. Or when you ordered um, it. Okay. I so made I wonder, a stand that goes in my garden and it looks up at the poles. It doesn't have to be as tall as the Gordrax. What are the pros and cons do you think of a game camera versus the Blink? For, for, like, for an outdoor use. Does anybody know? <laughs> the well, Wi-Fi. The, oh, you said Yeah, cons. the Wi-Fi. The pro yeah, for what? the... If you wanted to know if you had owl problems, Tammy, specifically speaking for your case, if your rack is close enough to your house that you have Wi-Fi, I think the blink would be better because really? you're going to get almost instant notification that something happened where I don't know until the next day when I go and check my game camera. Um, and it's also going to be cheaper uh, to use a blank than it. Well, I think from what uh, they were saying about the, the blanks on sale, my camera, my game cameras were around a hundred and 30 or 40 dollars a piece so that's kind of a wash but you get two cameras for mm -hmm. well if you buy them on sale you get two cameras in a sync module and all that for about the same price that i got one trail camera for um so of course you're going to go through more batteries on the blink but if i was just wanting to know about owls and i had good if my racks were 40 feet from my house I'd have a blink stuck on the back wall of my house, I think, for sure. What do you got? What do you blink guys think? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Like if it's within 100 feet, then you, you can even get like one and wire it so you don't even have to. Like if you're going to stick it to your house, you can just power it through an electric line and just not mm -hmm. have to worry about. Yeah, you wouldn't have to worry about batteries. That's true. I didn't, yeah, I didn't think about that. You could run it with a mini USB. Or like you if you're know. sticking it on a roof, you can also run the solar power. Mm -hmm. But then again, you wouldn't be able to see at night. Like you wouldn't right. get 
No, I would just stick a power power bank in between, mm -hmm. so it always has power. Yes. Like if power is an issue, but the thing is though, if you're not like if it's not inside a nest nest, it won't pick up that much activity, so you won't be constantly triggering. That's true. Uh, so the battery will run few months. I have a question. Sure. Go ahead, Lindsay Dar, the Martin Hogg of Missouri. <laughs> um, so I was I was not sure this was gonna work for me either, but now I'm kind of wondering if it is. I'm pretty sure that my gourd rack is at or right over a hundred feet from the house. Um, and people have been talking about these extenders and I think Dustin left, but he said something about putting them into any outlet, but then he talked about wiring and that's where he lost me. So basically my it, question is, um, the, my chicken why? coop is closer to the gourd rack than my house is and it does have electricity. So would that work with the blink cameras or? So best way to find out is just get a blink camera and once you set it up, just go close to the rack and just check for a video. Mm -hmm. If it picks up signal, then you're all good. If okay. then you don't even need, because like I have one that's more than hundred foot away and it runs fine. It had no issues getting videos from it. So basically I think if it's right around hundred foot, you might be okay as long as you have decent internet connection and uh, probably a decent Wi-Fi. Uh, well, and that's kind of my concern because like, I don't know, I mean, my my internet, you know, because I live out in the boondocks, um, you know, it, it's like a kind of an antenna that they installed on the top of the house. And it seems like it works fine for like Netflix and such, but it's also on the wrong end of the house from the gourd rack. So like even... Mm -hmm. Sometimes if I'm on the end where I'm watching the gourd racks from like my bedroom or whatever, then it's it's not the best. So I yeah. then, so then I I'm like recommend the like vendors. are you using a one unit router or are you using a mesh router? Um how many routers mean? do you have? Just one? Yeah, they just ran it through the wall of the house actually. So you have wired connection. Yeah. Okay, even better. So wired connection. So whichever wall you have a connection closest to your rack, you want to put a Wi-Fi extender there. Okay. So like any Wi-Fi, what it does is when you wire, uh, like an active wire connection onto your, like you will have two ports on each, um, like any mesh router will still have a wired connection because the way mesh routers work, you have to have internet coming from somewhere into it physically into at least one of the units and then it talks to the others so if okay. you have a wired connection already in the house so means your connection is strong everywhere wherever you have a wired connection okay so you just plug it plug a mesh router close to the wall wherever you have an outlet there so from that point it's going to spread the connection okay so, like I use Google Mesh Router. They're like uh, Costco, they sell four units for uh, I think 199 or maybe 220, something like that. But any, any mesh router will do. Uh, you basically, or even a Wi-Fi extender, as because with wired connection, you're not really losing any signal. Okay. Whenever it's going through wire, it's exact same signal goes everywhere. So you just plug it in uh, you can even run a cable outside to your house as long as you have a power outlet somewhere. You can put a Wi-Fi router there and it will broadcast. Like let's say if you, if you can bury a wire and connect a wire from your house and run it 200 feet and just dig it up at your board rack and have an electric connection there. <laughs> you can actually broadcast the signal from there also, but it's not probably gonna be like, let's say if you have a break in the wire, it will mess up your probably home internet connection also. 
So okay. Not something I would recommend. Like, I would not do it myself unless, like, if someone has experience doing stuff like that, I would recommend someone like that trying it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but so, do I put, can I put one of these mesh routers like in the chicken coop? Like, it would help to yeah. get it further out. Yeah. Like, as I don't know. As, I... So, the way mesh router work is let's say I put one, I put a second one 100 foot away, I put a third one another 100 foot away. You're basically extending a 300 foot distance with just three devices. So, yeah, as long as you okay. can stay at least three bars at your chicken coop and you have an electric connection there, you're all set. Okay. Just Take your phone and check on your chicken coop how many bars of Wi-Fi do you get? Okay. Okay. So the me the mesh out. router, the mesh router takes the signal and broadcasts and, it. It basically broadcasts Wi-Fi to the next mesh router to the next mesh router. Okay. Yeah. I think it's that like maybe the way three I need friends, to go. They're holding hands. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you just thank you. Test the connection out. You you might you might actually be fine without anything. You you just have not tested it out. So you want to test it out before you buy anything. Okay. Thank you. you. Can't, Lindsay can't buy a mesh router. She's gonna buy a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky woman. Every girl needs a horse, right? Yes. <laughs> a burner okay so i do have that deluxe rack still so i could put it up temporarily yes you could that's there's nothing wrong with the deluxe rack. it's a good rack. i know it just like it's like it's gonna bother my ocd because it's like the two inch one and then i have the big three inch one i'm like mm, i don't think i want to do that but maybe i will You'd die if you saw my side. I have round poles, square poles. <laughs> I keep them all at a different height, too, just to mess with people with OCD. <laughs> yep, that'd probably do it. All right, guys, anybody got any more questions? This has been really awesome. Thank you to the presenters. Thank yeah. you, guys. I agree. Really I agree. Uh, really Dustin, talk. Thank you for doing this. Yes, definitely. Y'all, y'all were, y'all were doing. I mean, y'all got way. I mean, y'all, y'all just knocked the ball slap out of the park. Y'all did a fantastic job. And it was uh, understandable. That's what I liked about it. <laughs> well, here, this, I told them to to try to put it in first grade level. Oh, thanks a I, lot. <laughs> no, I knew I was going to be on here, and I'm thinking they were talking about sync modules and. And this, that, and I'm like, y'all, y'all got to make this stuff simple because I uh -oh. don't understand it. So, no, that wasn't directed Brand, at you, Tammy. That was directed at me. You told him that just for me. That's what, that's what you did. No, ma'am. Well, I, I, I would love to. Go to back. I would love I to wait. say that I did, but it, it was actually for me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, Dustin, Dustin sent a, a message and said their internet died again. So, um. Uh, <laughs> But I can thank him as well as Saif uh, both, and they'll see it on the on the YouTube video if they watch it. So, uh, great, great VST guys, and thank you all for coming, and thank you North Carolina Purple Martin Society for joining us as well. Thank you. We had two folks that had family emergencies. They told me at last minute they couldn't come. But. Okay. Well, they can all watch it on YouTube as soon yep. as I get it posted which maybe will happen tonight. Maybe it won't. We never know. So, all right, guys. Thanks so much. We're out. Right, good night, y'all. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Good night.